was maybe practice week with. Uh, I thought that you know today you know I always tell that story about uh, you know the one time I went to Texans and just how bad the practice was and you know ended up beating the Saints, hold them held them to three points, but and again it was a good day. They came in, they game focused, you know started at, you know eight o'clock this morning. Guys were ready to go, uh, squad, and so it felt like. Um, that carried through. That carried through a little longer meetings, maybe a couple extra plays a day that we just needed to get in. And uh, so I thought it was good. And uh, we'll just have to continue to prepare and, you know, ultimately, um, you know, play better on Sunday than, than what we have. How would you like the way that Dillard and Duncan handled the week? Uh, good. You know, I mean, excited uh, to see Jalen. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll start out there. And this is just a great opportunity for him. Uh, you know, and, and Dre will be ready to go and is through protocol and, um, you know, ready to go. How's Calvin just kind of adjusted? Has he got a second week with him? Good. He, he's adjusted well. A very, very intelligent player, um, has good size and he's played, you know, would have no reservations uh, if he had to go in there. Um, you know, didn't know him before this and kind of like, kind of like him and the way he approaches his business and, how he studied, and it's a lot of volume, you know, to come in and learn um, new, new, new plays and code words and, you know, cadence, you know, things that they've heard, that he's heard, you know, in Carolina for so long and then coming here. Uh, so, again, I think if he's got to play for us on Sunday, he'll, you know, confident that he'll know what to do and you know, do his best to, to do his job. When, when, you, you, spoke about, when you spoke about the uh... – the tackle situation earlier. You guys said that you know Jalen Duncan and Diller were comfortable on the left. Radens was comfortable on the right, but he said that he's comfortable on the left to us when we ask him. So how, how did you go about arriving on, on that? Well, I mean, I just feel like you know, I'm, I'm sure that you know Dylan's got to be ready to play multiple um, positions and spots. That's kind of what his role has been, and um, felt like that was probably what was best um, fr from. You know, Jalen and, and Dylan, or Dre, excuse me, starting there. Mm -hmm. You know, starting there with those guys on the left hand side, knowing that um, that Dylan could play, you know, both. And so, you know, that's that's the decision that we that we made based on you know the eight linemen that we have. You, you talked, I think, maybe way back in camp, just about how smart Jalen was. At, you know. Uh, in the classroom and just remembering certain things. Mm -hmm. Has that kind of paid off uh, in getting him ready to play? And to sure, kind of sure. You know, and I can go back to the pre-draft process and just, you know, his ability to retain just information, um, you know, that we gave him there. And sometimes you know, we all have different personalities, right? And so Dylan's, I mean, excuse me, uh, Jalen's probably you know, more reserved in, in his personality, but the, never has met one time that he didn't know the information or, you know, didn't retain it. So what's most important is what he does on Sunday and how he can, you know, process the, you know, the play in and play out um, duties and, you know, situations that, that occur throughout the game. Josh Wiley led you in, re in reps, game reps at tight end last week. What's he done that's kind of led to his ascent uh, to get more time? With 37 snaps, I'm not really, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, him, him and Chig rotated probably some in the, in the two minute. And, but, you know, again, Cheddar Bob's trying to, you know, play multiple roles and, you know, be ready to go at different spots. And, you know, hopefully he can, you know, we can find him and, you know, catch the, catch the balls that we throw to him. And he plays on special teams and so continue to progress. How's Kiaris? Uh, still kind of working through, you know, um, has had some, I would say, you know, rehab on the field, but, you know, probably still a little bit of ways from, from getting him back on the field. But, you know, trying to work with all of those guys that, that are on IR that could maybe help us at some point in time this year. When you have a veteran like uh, Terrell Edmonds, you know, you brought him in from another team. You guys play like at home when it's really loud. Like, how do you go about making sure that he has those same signals and the things? Yeah, well, we practice. You know, I mean, we try to use the music out here for the defense and forcing them to to use hand signals and eye contact. And again, our vision and communication are critical. Our vision, uh, not only on the football field, you know, 
when we before the play, you know, but during the play, what am I looking at? So the vision before is, hey, I'm looking at my other safety. I'm looking at my corner. I'm communicating. Somebody's got to give a call. Somebody's got to get a call. Um, it, you know, and they, they work through signals in their meetings and, you know, in the walkthroughs and in practice. And um, it can be the same for, for Kayvon and for everybody else that's, you know, kind of new at this point, especially in the back end or if you had a receiver that came in. Was it tough for you when, when you made that switch, you know, playing in a loud place like Kansas City, they're trying to rile up the offense, but you as a defensive player, you're trying to make sure your communication is right? Um, yeah, we weren't very good in Kansas City, so there weren't as many fans as they have now. I noticed that, uh, just a side note. Um, Funny how that happens. Uh, we we had we had Matt Castle, not Patrick Mahomes. Um, sorry, Matt. Um, it, it is, you know, it, it it's. I think it's real. You know, I mean that defensive. You know, they're they're going fast, or you know, I mean we got to make sure that we're on the same page, and you know, the, you're getting a call on the headset, and you're trying to echo it, or you're looking at the sidelines for the signals. Um, so it, it, I think that that's a real thing, I man. That's a great problem to have. That we, you know, if we can we can play well enough to to have that type of reaction from our fans. Um, but I think that it's, you know, that's that's real. Where, where you have to make sure that you're um, doing a great job uh, defensively, uh, and not just assuming that you can verbally communicate with somebody uh, in some of those situations on third down or you know at, at the goal line or whenever it may be. Sticking with defense, what were some of the kind of corrections that you wanted them to make coming out of Jacksonville after, you know, a place where you guys are usually pretty good as a defense? Um, well, I mean, I think that the, the biggest thing is just the consistency. You know, we talked about that, where two plays are really good and then a third down mistake or a penalty. Uh, stop them two plays in, in the red zone and then on third down, uh, give up a play. So I would say there, because there was a lot of really good snaps. There was a lot of snaps for no gain or minimal gain that, that we would say that were efficient. Um, trying to provide, you know, the, the biggest thing here for us is we got to find a way to work together on the field to, to create some turnovers and some ball disruption. And that's been something that we'll continue to preach. But if two guys are executing the game, you know, working together to, to help that game affect the quarterback that in turn you know, could, could lead to ball disruption opportunity and interception or if a guy's making a tackle, right? We've had, had some good tackles, had some good vice tackles, but first guy in making a, a sound fit tackle and then the other guys coming in there and continue to hammer. You know, Amani came in there on a toss crack, came to balance, you know, Elijah came under, Amani overlapped, it was a minimal gain and Armani kind of stood him up. He didn't dive off the diving board, you know, and Roger came in and he tried. And you could see it on film. He tried to try to rape, but the ball didn't come out. And we just have to continue to keep doing those things and know that uh, that it's the right way and that the ball will come out. And Elijah did his job. Armani did his job. And then and Roger came in and, and was trying to do his job and the ball just didn't come out. But if we keep doing it and looking for those opportunities, then the ball is going to come out. You know, just like Christian Ford in Pittsburgh, you know, they blew the whistle. They said that forward progress had stopped, and you know, Christian stayed on his feet. The guy was starting to kind of go down or back, and you know, he raked the ball out. And another, you know, maybe one crew doesn't see that as forward progress, and you know, that's a fumble. Anybody out? Up, uh, uh, Burks. Burks will be out, and I think uh, Hubbard. Gifford yeah. got a chance. Yeah, Gifford would be questionable. Thank you, guys. Did you grow up a Panthers fan at all from part of the country you're from? Or? I did. Uh, we got two games on every Sunday. It was the Panthers and the Falcons. So, uh, of course, I grew up a uh, big Steve Smith fan. Yeah. What did you like about his game and, and as you watched his career? Uh, man, the way, the way he played the game, you know, he, he, he's a dog. You got uh, to respect Steve Smith, my favorite receiver, honestly. Have you run across him? From the time he retired, has he ever kind of given you words of what he thinks about your game? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, you know, that's that's my guy. He, he keep it honest with me. Uh, you know, I can I can hit him up and ask him for anything, advice about anything. What would you say is the, the like best? Can, <clears throat> what would you say is the best piece of advice he, he's given you in your conversation? 
Uh, man, something I can't say on camera. You know, me and Steve, we got a, you know, we got a real relationship. You know, I feel like, um, you know, he keep it real with me. One of the few people I know that I can ask uh, about anything. You brought that up with, with Brady. He's also one of those guys that keeps it real with you. How many, how many people can you truly get on the street back? Don't you feel like oh, uh, man, probably a handful. That's about it, you know. Um, I've always been like that. I kept a small circle my whole life, um, you know, so probably like a handful, if not less. Sean Jefferson's a guy we know because he was here. I know you were with him in Arizona. How, how did he, I, know, I know he's in Carolina now. Uh, how was he to deal with on a regular basis, and, and what do you think you learned from him? I mean, I love Sean Jefferson. Um, taught me a lot about football, but I would say the main thing Sean Jefferson taught me is uh, how to be a man of faith. Uh, you know, he always challenged me to, uh, you know, to, to get into the word, um, you know, and just kind of work on my faith and, uh, you know, just continue to, you know, to grow off the field in that aspect. So, you know, Sean Jay and I still communicate to this day. His wife is, uh, you know, an amazing lady as well. Uh, you know, so uh, both the, both Sean Jefferson and his wife, I uh, love, love both of them like family. Uh, you know, he comes here, uh, you know, during the day. So him and I talk, you know, trailing is trailing. Uh, you know, one thing you, you got to know about trailing that, you know, we know, you know, trailing, um, trailing loves the game of football, man. So, you know, obviously he's going through some stuff right now uh, physically. Uh, so, you know, you just got to give him space and time. But uh, him and I still talk when he's here for sure. Did you get old Jefferson any advice on running routes and catching passes? And what, what, how do you think he did uh, on Sunday? Oh, nah, he did good. I gave I gave offensive uh, coordinators a little crap for, you know, him getting a touchdown, some of us not having one. But uh, nah, it, was, it was all jokes, though. It's all jokes, man. Um, I'm happy for him that he was able to get a touchdown. Uh, you know, not a lot of defensive guys can say that. What's he said? You brag a little bit on that, or what, what, how's, he, how's he been to handle this week? Nah, man, he's 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 down to earth, man. He doesn't he doesn't talk junk to too many people, uh, just a lot. Uh, it was a good route. It was right there at the goal line. Um, I mean, it was right right there. You know, I think if he would have, you know, went one one step short, it would have been uh, not a touchdown. So I guess it was a good route, man.